for this week's challenge, we've got all of our data in basically one column, and we need to find a way of separating that all out into our different dimensions that will actually allow us to visualize the data. So let's take a look at what I mean by that. So we've got our batch number, um, and we've got our data values and data parameters, and we've got this date time in separate fields of when each of these things are happening. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is make a date time column, so combine these two into one. We're then going to split out some information about the result data, so the bike type and the batch status, um, because we'll want these to be separate columns in our data set, and then we'll start dealing with the process data. Okay, so for our date time, making that one field, there's a handy function for us called make date time, where we can literally just use that function, have our date, have our time, and it brings those two fields together, which is lovely. Okay, so then we're going to focus on that result data, our bike type and our batch status. So I've just filtered this data to just include the result data. So literally just by clicking on that, say keep only, and this keeps only my result data there. And then I can do a um, rows to columns pivot in order to get the, these data values into two separate columns of bike type and batch status. So we drag our data parameter into the top bit once we've changed it to be rows to columns here in the pivot step. And then we bring our data value, making sure that we aggregate it via a max. And then we get these nice two columns here. Okay, so that's great. We've got our two new columns associated with each batch. We know uh, what the batch status is and what the bike type is for each of our batch numbers. Now let's deal a little bit with the process data. So all I've done here is filtered it to just be the process data, and then I'm joining that data back in on the batch number. Okay, so now our instructions in the requirements are to deal with the actual versus target data. So I'm doing a split here on our uh, data parameter field. So let me just show what I did. So I split the values, I used a custom split with a space, and I just wanted the first of that field to split off. And that gives us our actual, our name, and our target here. So we're going to filter out the name in this um, instance. We'll deal with that separately uh, in this part of the flow. But yeah, very similar protest to what we just did. So we filter out the name. Um, we're replacing in our data parameter, the words actual or target, and then we're doing that rows to columns pivot again with our actual and target and our data values coming through there. Okay, so that's that part of the data dealt with. Now we're coming to look at how we can bring in this information about the name of the process. So um, if I just find that for you here, so the name of the process stage in the data parameter, it just says name process stage for each of those. Um, but our data values here are the warming up, the shutter open, um, and so on and so forth. So there's clearly a set order to these things happening um, as described in the challenge. And we've been told by the requirements for the challenge that we want the maximum end time of the whole batch number that can be uh, the end time of our uh, data set that we're working with today. So we're going to first calculate that before we go any further. So we're going to, for each uh, batch number, we're just writing an LOD here, uh, we want to know the max date time, which will become our end time, okay? Okay. So now is where we go to filter to just the name of the process stage, um, and we can see that we're just removing some fields here and we just want to make an ordering there so i'm using the ranking functionality here to get my order but you could also use row number as well many different ways to get to the same um, result as usual in a prep so we're grouping by our batch number and we're using the ranking functionality in an ascending order of our date time field and this just gives us our process order so for these different stages we know what order they're happening in and we know the end time for that each batch is, you know, the cutoff point for the whole process finishing. Okay, so if we want to know the start time of each of those um, steps, then we're going to need to do some joining our data onto itself. So our next step, we can define by doing the process order that we just calculated, that rank minus one. And that always feels a bit intuitive to me that it's minus one rather than plus one. Um, 
but basically if you can see it kind of lining up here then we know that our process order here um, if you can see this date time uh, if I just make sure that they're the same there so you can see that the um, yeah so if I looked for example I'm going to work with this um, batch number 7000 here then our process order is as so so we want basically this date time here as our start time for process one and then process one ends at the start of process two so these are the two um, rows that we want to be side by side with each other so that's why we're minusing a one so you can see how that would join together there the one to the one okay so we join those together we do it on batch number and the process order equals the next stage and then we can see if I come to here um, that we have um, that exactly what we were just saying if I go to that 7000 again then we've got that 810 lining up nicely with the 855 and this is where our end time field comes in so we are just saying for our end time um, if our date time minus one which is that brought in from the next step if that's null then we want the overall end time otherwise just leave it as the um, ending time of that previous step okay so we do it. go ahead and remove some fields rename some fields we've got a start time we've got our end time for each of our batch numbers now for each of those processes um, and we can use another join finally um, joining on the batch number making sure that we have our date time being after the start time and before the end time so that we can match up those names of the process stages um, to what's actually happening for those uh, different data parameters and all that's left to do is tidy it up a little bit by removing a couple of fields um, and reordering the fields so that we can make sure that our data is matching uh, Tom's solution. So hopefully that all made sense for you and that you enjoyed this challenge. I don't know how Tom comes up with these things sometimes. I think that that was a great one for reshaping some strange data um, and definitely the type of thing that you might encounter um, in the real world, I would say. So hopefully that was useful for you and uh, thanks for watching.